experimented Spider-Man. One day at the police office, an urgent call was received, prompting the response team to prepare quickly and arrive at the scene as soon as possible. The heavy rain did not demotivate the hard-working Captain Chow. At the scene, the examination team was present earlier than the rest. But there was something puzzling them as bright as daylight on their faces. The chief of the autopsy team named Shen reported to Captain Chow that this was an extremely bizarre case. The wound on the victim and even around the scene showed that ordinary humans did not cause it. And as soon as he saw the dead body, Captain Chow could not contain his surprise. The victim died in a highly gruesome way, and the expression left on the face of the deceased seemed to be intensely frightened. There were countless fatal wounds on the victim's body, and all of them looked horrific. According to the examination team, the wounds were not caused by a normal weapon. Captain Chow was also anxious to know what was left on the scene so that he could judge the cause of the victim's death himself. And according to Captain Shen, there were no witnesses present at the scene except for the victim's wife. But she has lost her mind and is being treated at the hospital. According to the remains at the scene, it seemed that the killer jumped out from an alley to attack the victim. Now, they can only wait for the testimony from the victim's wife. Captain Chow decided to go to the hospital to see how the victim's wife was doing. After arriving, the doctor at the hospital informed Captain Chow that the victim's condition was critical. But before reaching the hospital room, both of them heard the insanely terrified screams of the victim's wife. According to the doctor, the patient kept saying strange things that didn't make any sense. Even though they gave the woman a sedative, every time she woke up she couldn't help but lose control and become manic. She kept screaming and kept talking about a monster that killed her husband. But apparently according to the traces left at the scene, there were human footprints and skid marks that led them to believe that a scuffle of some kind unfolded. The captain came over to question her in hopes of finding some clarity on the matter. As soon as she saw the police, she hastily got off the bed and ran over to embrace and hold on to Captain Chow. Seeing that she had stabilized a bit, Captain Chow asked about what had happened and if she could recall anything. The woman was now able to calm down and slowly recount everything with a frightened expression on her face. According to the girl, this morning she and her husband were walking down the street. Then suddenly raindrops started pouring down. Herself and her husband ran into a nearby alley and from a distance they seemed to see someone hiding behind a trash can. Before they could figure out what the other person was doing, they were shocked when the man suddenly turned around with his white eyes and bloody mouth biting down on a mouse. It was frightening to see his face covered with dark patches while he didn't appear to be entirely human. Suddenly the creature leaped out of the trash with tremendous speed. It rushed towards him like a hungry tiger, its mouth wide open with sharp teeth, looking extremely ferocious. Her husband pulled her away as they quickly ran out of the alley, but the hideous creature did not let them go. It had many arms like a spider and was very fast. Its fingernails were as sharp as a wild animal's claws. It scratched her husband's back, making him scream painfully. And because he wanted her to escape, the husband stayed behind to keep the disgusting creature busy as she made her get away. It had six arms, was extremely fast and dangerous, she explained. It was sad to know she witnessed the brutal murder of her husband. Seeing Captain Chow's skeptical expression, she cried and continued that she was talking the truth. She was sure of what she had seen. At that time, Captain Chow had thoughts in his mind. He asked the doctors to care for her and comfort her. Hearing an announcement on the 703 forensic team frequency, Captain Chow quickly responded. The forensic detective asserted that the case was very strange indeed and asked Captain Chow if he had any clues. He claimed that this case was really bizarre and asked if Captain Chow had any leads. 
The captain told Mr. Yang everything about the strange creature. Mr. Yang also informed the captain that he had found some traces on the victim's wound that could help with the investigation. Chow impatiently listed all the remaining evidence and hoped the case would soon be resolved. First of all, the victim's wound was deep and messy. It seemed unlike an attack by a human, more like a wild animal grabbing prey. After analyzing the wound for a while, Mr. Yang showed Captain Chow a piece of critical evidence. It was a fingernail stuck to the wound. These wounds had cuts on the skin made by fingernails, which seemed to have come from human hands. The case was becoming more complicated by the minute. As he was saying goodbye to Mr. Yang, Captain Chow immediately returned to the general department. It was getting dark when he went to the head office to urgently consult Boss Lu. He reported everything to his superior from what was found on the victim's body including the wife's testimony. Mr. Lu Feng realized that this case could not be ignored. All details showed that this creature, whatever it was, was extremely dangerous, so they had to hurry up and solve the issue fast. After the conversation, Captain Chow walked out of the room when some subordinates rushed over. They informed the captain that they caught a suspicious man around the area of the crime scene who also had a criminal record of multiple robberies. Based on the testimony, the things he saw were very similar to what the wife was talking about. The subordinate impatiently wanted the convict to tell Captain Chow everything he saw. As long as he made a sincere declaration, his charges would be alleviated. But he seemed to be afraid of something, so his reply came out crooked. Captain Chow was not patient enough, so he raised his voice to intimidate him. Finally, he gradually recounted everything he witnessed at the time of the murder. That same time, he planned to enter an abandoned military area to steal equipment. As he climbed over the barbed wire wall, he landed safely, thanks to his experience of stealing. Nothing was really difficult for him. Behind the fence was an old warehouse, which was formerly the old military medical room. There definitely was a lot of useful equipment inside, but the door was tightly sealed. The lock looked sturdy and solid, not to mention complicated. With practical experience, he found a way to unlock it. His years of experience paid off, and his unlocking kit was always carried with him. In but a moment, the lock was open. He slowly opened the door and surveyed the inside. A stench annoyed him. The room was empty, and in the distance was a curtain. It seemed to have something behind it. As he approached, the stench got worse. Dragging the curtain aside, there were many hospital beds and medical equipment. He looked around and found a very bizarre surgical sketch on the wall that portrayed a human, but with six limbs, like an insect. After seeing the sketch, he panicked when he saw that there appeared to be a person lying down on a bed nearby covered by a blanket. The blanket seemed to be trembling slightly. Despite the terrible stench, he intended to uncover it to see what was lying below. With all his courage, he placed his hand on the blanket. He pulled the blanket away vigorously. His face turned pale and stressed after seeing what was underneath the blanket. A man with four arms. The surgery looked fresh and the bleeding was causing all the stench. He was so scared he passed out. With trembling legs unable to stand up, he crawled on the floor. While frightened and crawling little by little to get out of the room, he bravely decided to get up and run. As he was trying to make his escape, he ran into a man who had appeared behind him all of a sudden. The man looked at him with a fierce face as if he knew exactly what had occurred. Without much talk, he held up a small knife, his face full of murderer's intent. And he did not hesitate, rushing to stab the thief. The thief frantically reached out to try to block the knife. This left his hand with a deep cut and blood stains all over his arms. He desperately pushed the other man away and rushed out. Luckily, he was able to climb over the fence and escape. 
He panicked and ran for his life. The terrifying man didn't seem to have the intention of chasing after him. He stood from afar and watched them, his cruel face still holding the knife. He told all of this with an expression of great panic since he was just a thief after all and not a violent man. After being able to drag himself home, he was still in shock over what he had just witnessed. In his room, he bandaged his wounds from the knife cut. What he had just witnessed this early in the morning made him unable to rest. He was scared, so he kept the knife by his hand to feel more secure. Suddenly, the terrifying man appeared and raised the knife above him. Even though it was a small surgical knife, it was extremely sharp. He was stabbed with blood gushing out like a stream of water that he could not hold back. Shaking awake, he screamed while sweat poured down his face. Touching his body, he realized it was all just a dream. He was haunted by the terrifying man. Now sitting upright for too long, he caught a glimpse of something outside the window. Outside, something that looked like a giant spider appeared, clinging to a window. He trembled with his knife in his hand and stood hiding by the side of the wall. Regaining his composure, he reached out to lift the curtain in order to get a better view of what was going on outside. Days later, no matter where he went, he imagined the other man watching him. So when he heard that there was a strange murder and the culprit was a disgusting creature, he went to the scene to investigate the situation. With his testimony, Captain Chow decided to go there for an inspection. He hurriedly left the room. With a few more comrades, he went to the abandoned military zone that the thief had told them about. The teammate announced that the door was firmly locked. Captain Char looked around, then decided to climb over the fence to get inside. The two could quickly and safely come right where the thief had told them about. With their guns firmly in hand, the two entered the house and also saw the curtains that the thief reported. Captain Chow and his teammates were very careful with what's behind the curtain. After a moment of investigation, the two charged straight in. Captain Chow provided support for his comrades, and on the bed was still something lying and covered by a blanket. The teammate reached out and tugged on the blanket to examine the contents. Then an extremely fast knife passed across his neck, making him unable to turn his head. The non-stop blood flow made him tremble. Under the blanket was the man the thief told them about he had apparently been hiding there for a while. Captain Chow just turned around to shoot at the guy, but he quickly launched a scalpel at the captain. Thanks to his luck and quick reflexes, Captain Chow was able to dodge easily. The captain rushed to catch the man, but he was incredibly agile. They writhed on the floor, Captain Chow could not avoid being injured. Taking that opportunity, the man ran to the door. Watching his teammate collapsing on the ground, Captain Chow was extremely angry. He rushed to the door to chase after the man. Meanwhile, the man was trying to climb over the fence. The captain held up his gun with real combat experience. A shot was fired. As gunfire rang out, the man could not escape and fell from the wall. After that, Captain Chow helped his injured teammate to the emergency room. The teammate was taken to the hospital in time, so his life was saved. The captain reported everything to his superiors. Boss Lu also investigated the man's identity. He was a doctor in the old army, always dreaming of creating a cold-blooded warrior. Captain Chow was extremely angry because of the man's inhumanity. He captured living people to research and deliberately created a monster. At the same time, hearing the announcement that the man had regained consciousness, Captain Chow and Boss Lu decided to go to the man's hospital room. The man was still very stubborn, lying on the hospital bed, even though his hands were handcuffed and surrounded by the police. Boss Lu Feng angrily asked him about the research. But instead, the man just showed a contemptuous face, smirked, and said that he would leave here soon. Captain Chow and Chief Lu Feng both knew what he meant. 
Leaving the hospital room, they were both worried that perhaps the other monster would come. Boss Lu Feng told Captain Chao not to let him have a chance to escape. Captain Chao was also very determined. He said he would be the one to watch out for the man. They also knew that the monster would be coming soon and they didn't know how terrible the guy was in the end, but they had to be extra careful anyway. That night, Captain Chao sent strict guards to stand outside the room, and Captain Chao was also there to observe the situation. Seeing that his subordinate teammate was tired, the captain did not hesitate to replace him to guard the hospital room door. The teammate announced that he would wash his face to stay awake and then return to his position. Having said that, he walked towards the toilet area, but as soon as he disappeared at the end of the hall, there was a sudden noise. After that, his body was knocked away by something powerful. From a distance, a man in a black robe with a tall belt approached. With sharp teeth and white eyes, it looked like a monster, not an ordinary person. Captain Chao quickly ordered everyone to get in position and pull out guns to defend themselves. Immediately, Captain Chao and his teammates surrounded the monster. But in an instant, from within his black cloak, many arms were exposed at lightning speed and forcefully attacked the policeman. During the struggle, a policeman pulled his cloak off, revealing the inside of a tall, toned body, along with six flexible, extremely scary arms. Captain Chow proved extremely confused. This guy was a monster, not a human anymore. The monster burst out like a wild beast fast and robust, and no one could stop him. Captain Chow held the gun towards it, firing repeatedly, but it almost only scratched the outside. Captain Chow was stunned. It was too fast and could dodge his bullets. Suddenly, it hung from the ceiling fast, looking like a spider. Then it plunged from the ceiling downwards towards Chow at lightning speed. Captain Chow held up his gun and repeatedly fired at it, but it only injured its skin at this distance. Upon landing, it also injured Chow's arm. Right after, it rushed into the room where the monstrous man was locked. Despite the painful smearing wound, Chow was determined to chase after it. But at that time, the monster had freed the sick doctor. It carried the man in his hand and prepared to jump out of the window to escape. That monstrous doctor turned to look at Chao, still showing a smile of contempt and pride. Then the monster jumped out of the hospital room window with the doctor in its arms, even though they were on the fifth floor. Captain Chao chased after them but couldn't keep up. He aimed his gun straight at the two criminals. At this point, the monster had already launched straight ahead and clung to the building next to it. Captain Chow fired multiple shots repeatedly to stop them. However, all the bullets only hit the hand and body of the creature, which was unfortunately not enough to defeat it. Suddenly, the gun ran out of ammo in the most critical moment. Captain Chow was worried because the criminals were right in front of him. They would escape but the captain didn't take any further action. While the oil was boiling, a gunshot was heard from behind Captain Chow. The bullet flew straight at the head of the hideous monster. The fatal shot made the monster and the man fall from above together. Captain Chao turned to look back. It turned out that Chief Lu Feng arrived in time. As expected, the oldest spicy ginger, the boss Lu, who was a fine marksman. The sound of the two perpetrators falling from above attracted many onlookers. When they looked closely at the monster created by the doctor, both Chao and Boss Lu Feng felt unnerved. Two corpses fell from above, so a lot of blood was spilled on the ground, and Boss Lu ordered that the scene be handled quickly to avoid people's curiosity. The next day at the police station, Captain Chow reported the entire incident of the case. Captain Chow and Boss Lu were still in shock. After all, this was a crazy monstrous case and crazy research project. 
Captain Chow offered to destroy the creature's corpse, along with the research reports of the monstrous doctor. Boss Lu Feng also agreed with this suggestion because this research was too barbaric. It was impossible for another madman to find it and do it again. In the end, Boss Lu Feng decided to put a red seal on it to finally close the case. This was a monstrous case that would probably haunt the investigation team for a long time.